Dear ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Chem Connection that provides you with regulatory news in between ChemCon conferences. A few more months until October when we can meet live again in Vienna. Approximately a thousand kilometers from Vienna in Brussels they are experiencing a hectic and hot summer, focusing on the finalization of several legislative proposals. For example, the proposal on the implementation of the One Substance One assessment, including the reattribution of tasks to the agencies. And obviously they are working hard on the highly expected REACH revision. Of course we will need to wait until the commission has adopted the proposals, but we do know that these regulatory reforms will have a huge impact on the chemical industry. And therefore, as you can expect from us, the Chemcom Europe 2023 program is bursting with need to know content. In this chem connection, Mercedes Vinas from the European Chemicals Agency and Christian Grünling of the Association of the Chemical Industry of Austria highlight the importance of the Vienna program for industry and authorities. And in this chem connection we will also connect with the cooler Helsinki where Tiago Pedrosa of the European Chemicals Agency shares with us the latest developments concerning the use of alternative methods to animal testing. But first we will explore the exciting Chemcon Europe 2023 program with Mercedes and Christian. Our free workshop on Monday morning at 7.30 features the best practices, focus areas and industry perspectives on enforcement. Mercedes, zero tolerance for non-compliance is a key aspect of the chemical strategy for sustainability. Well, hello dear and uh, greetings from Helsinki. Enforcement is key when talking about uh, zero tolerance to non-compliance, which is needed for a level playing field in Europe. This is always a topic of interest for industry, so we are looking forward to starting the ChemCon conference with a workshop fully dedicated on this topic. Our Forum on Enforcement Authorities has reflected on the learnings from the past enforcement projects and can also share what the priority areas will be in the coming years. For example, we already know that the next EU-wide enforcement project will focus on products sold online to check that they comply with the EU's chemicals legislation. Thank you, Mercedes. Christian, compliance-driven companies gather in Vienna at ChemCon Europe 2023. Why is enforcement so relevant for industry? I'm really happy that ChemCon is more or less coming back to the roots and the beautiful city of Vienna can host this year's ChemCon Europe after 25 years again. I hope to see many of my friends and colleagues in the last week of October and they will get the chance to meet new participants at the conference in a wonderful city which often tops the ranking in terms of quality of life. Enforcement is a perfect topic for a Monday morning workshop to start the conference on global chemicals regulations. Proper enforcement is of utmost relevance for all compliance driven companies because it ensures a level playing field not only within the different European member states but also or even more when it comes to imported chemicals and products. Enforceability of the rules is a key aspect as well and I'm really looking forward to discussions at the opening workshop. Great! On Monday morning the in-depth seminar on EU CLP and global implementation of GHS provides an excellent opportunity to get a first-hand update on the EU CLP revision. Mercedes, what can we expect? The review of the EU regulation on classification and labeling has made progress and we know it will include new hazard classes. We have also started to work on the corresponding guidance documents in ECA. This seminar on Monday will be a good opportunity to explain in more detail what these changes are and start to share some of the next steps for the implementation needed by all actors. On Monday afternoon, the in depth seminar on global approach to notification of polymers and new chemicals. Polymers are on the menu. Christian, rumor has it that polymers will also be added to the REACH menu. What is your perspective on this? For me, it's not the question if polymers will be added, but how digestible the menu will be at the end. Clarity on ingredients, like the scope, the timing, notification, grouping of polymers, registration of certain polymers, is necessary for industry to prepare the menu in Europe. The task, of course, will be easier to handle, and the meal will taste much better if the leg regulatory ingredients are globally available and as much as possible aligned. 
On Tuesday we will submerge in many European topics like the implementation of the chemical strategy for sustainability and most probably the REIT revision. Christian, is industry anxious to get more clarity on those topics? The chemical strategy for sustainability is a key pillar of the European Green Deal. The vision of a climate neutral, circular economy is only possible with chemicals. All Green te Deal technologies need innovative substances, mixtures and products. Therefore, it's crucial for industry to know as soon as possible which ingredients will still be allowed to reach this goal. For me personally, the REACH revision is the cornerstone of the chemical strategy and I'm keen to learn how the revised rules will contribute to the overall Green Deal objectives. We're all very keen to learn this. On Tuesday afternoon we will explore the One Substance One Assessment implementation and the impact on application laws. Mercedes, grouping is a key aspect here. Can you share with us how grouping aids authorities in their prioritization process? Well, we'll with tens of thousands of substances registered under REACH, ECA and Member States decided to shift the focus several years ago to working with groups rather than individual substances in order to accelerate the identification, prioritization and risk management of the substance of concern. Our recently published report on the integrated regulatory strategy shows that progress has been made and provides details on how we use grouping to be more efficient and more effective with the authorities' regulatory actions. It is important for us that stakeholders understand how authorities pick the chemicals for further regulatory actions, so this will be explained in one of the ECA presentations at ChemCon. I'm already looking forward to this. ECA will support the Commission with the implementation of the Drinking Water Directive. Mercedes, what kind of tasks are assigned to ECA? Yes, ECA has received new tasks over the last years, and the most recent addition to our portfolio has been indeed a task under the Drinking Water Directive. The task is to come up with a list of substances that are approved in the EU to be used in materials in contact with drinking water. We have thought about how to implement this new process that will bring new requirements for industry. So in Vienna, we will share what industry can expect and how to best prepare. Thanks, Mercedes. Also good to mention that ECHO will participate again in the exhibition of ChemCon Europe 2023 in Vienna. An excellent opportunity for companies to ask all kinds of questions to Mercedes' team. On Authorization and Restriction Wednesday, our primary focus is the adapted authorization process and the rise of the restrictions. Christian, how are they stimulating the substitution of substances? The envisaged changes in the authorization and restriction process in REACH shall of course further stimulate the substitution of unwanted chemicals in Europe and at the same time also avoid regrettable substitution. However, if it comes to substitution, the development of alternatives for sure take time and resources. Clear priorities are needed and the overall objective of the Green Deal has to be the prime focus. For example, there is an inherent conflict between more durable products to reach the ambitious climate neutrality and circularity targets and the use of persistent substances for making those products which possibly could be banned. Thus, I expect a very lively discussion during Wednesday. On Wednesday afternoon we investigate the impact and challenges of the PFAS restriction. A draft proposal is currently reviewed in Helsinki. Mercedes, any news on this? At the moment it is going through the public consultation phase. This proposed restriction includes a wide range of PFAS uses in its scope and is said to be one of the largest ever on chemical substances in Europe. So clearly another interesting topic to present and discuss in Vienna. After the PFAS session, all the ChemCon delegates can enjoy Vienna a bit and relax during a well-deserved networking evening. Thursday morning, the regulatory bootcamp continues. We'll take a close look at regulatory developments around the globe. Among others, DEFRA will provide an update on UK REACH, the Indian Chemical Council will tell us more about the proposed India Chemicals Management and Safety Rules and we take a closer look at the Turkish KKDIC implementation, since this deadline is set at December 31st this year. But also, the Swiss regulations are part of our Thursday program, as well as many inside and chemical control legislation in the Asia-Pacific, including China, Korea, Japan and Australia. 
At Thursday afternoon we focus on the regulatory developments in Americas, like the US Tosca implementation and the Canadian Environmental Protection Act, Canada's cornerstone environmental law, as well as the latest developments in Latin America. On Sustainable Friday many presentations to inspire a more sustainable and circular value chain. Christian, what do you consider are the crucial circular innovations industry should closely follow? Well, to be honest, we do not have enough resources to continue a linear, non-sustainable way of producing and living. Furthermore, the crisis in recent years showed how vulnerable supply chains currently are. The only way forward will be more sustainable and more circular. Products need to be designed in a way that they can easily be reused or recycled, preferably in a sustainable way with safe chemicals. If mechanical recycling doesn't work for that reason, chemical recycling will play a major role in future. I'm really looking forward to the last day of the conference on important future and innovation topics like green and sustainable chemistry and the link to circular economy. Thank you, Christian. Part of the Friday program spotlights data management, data sharing and new approach methodologies, NUMS, a topic I discussed with Tiago Pedrosa from ECA. Tiago sketches ECA's role in developing new approach methodologies to replace animal testing and on promoting the use of alternative methods. I discussed with him that ECHA has been criticized for being conservative in its approach for accepting alternatives to testing on animals. And I asked him if this perception is changing. We believe that we need a clear and honest dialogue with our key stakeholders. Firstly, by communicating clearly about challenges we are facing uh, when trying to introduce NAMS in a horizontal and generic system like REACH. Secondly, uh, also, uh, we need to carefully listen to uh, the feedback from our stakeholders and take it into account in our activities. And finally, we need to communicate clearly about what are the critical elements needed to ensure that the development of NAMS is fit for a purpose, can provide comparable or better protections for human health and the environment while eliminating reliance on animal testing and ultimately provide more effective solutions. This will lead, and is already leading, we believe, to change in the way we are perceived, but more importantly, that we are part of the solution rather than the source of the problem. Tiago, you mentioned critical elements. What are those? We believe there are five fundamental elements that ensure that the current regulatory system functions well to ensure the protection of human health and the environment, and that these elements should be maintained in the future. And these are having defined hazard classes, having a clear criteria to allow consistent classification, having standard uh, information requirements to be able to have conclusive uh, hazard assessments, having quality uh, data for decision making that is reliable, comparable and reusable, and finally having uh, consistent regulatory actions within the chemical legislation. Now when we look into new approach methodologies, we see a gap. And we believe there are at least three critical needs that must be addressed. And these are on the ability to do hazard identification, so the ability to demonstrate that NAMS can also be used to allow a conclusive outcome on the lack of hazardous properties for a given regulatory endpoint. The second on hazard characterization, this is the ability to reliably identify a hazard based on changes at the molecular cellular level instead of observe adversity in an organism and to be able to inform how severe the toxicity effect is for human health or the environment. And the third one on extrapolation, the ability to reliably convert nominal concentrations measured or predicted by NAMS into external doses used to set safety levels and to communicate the hazard and assess the risks. The longer video on NAMS with Tiago is as always available on our YouTube channel. For now, thank you for watching, enjoy summer and looking forward to seeing you end of October in Vienna. Mm -hmm.